Hi there, welcome back to my art channel. My name is Anna and in today's video I'm going to be working on a snake and I'm going to be using watercolor and colored pencils for some final touches. Here you can see me sketching out my snake with all of the hundreds of little scales. Um, it is not the easiest subject matter I noticed. It's a second snake I've drawn or painted and the other one it was a smaller portion of the snake I was drawing then, so the other one was easier. <laughs> so you've seen I, um, I've locked in the background with some bluish gray, just a wet and wet messy wash for a blurry background. And now I'm blocking in the base colors of the snake. The snake is mostly yellow and I've also put in some brown markings. And I'm going to refine it a lot as we go along. I'm starting to work on the individual scales and I'm jumping around a lot, I guess. Um, I'm just kind of using very light washes to block in the scales. I, as you can see, is a little orange. And I'm also adding in some shades between the scales to kind of give them some more definition. This one was a very long painting, I would say, for one with all of the details due to the scales. And also I used colored pencil in the end and I um, guess colored pencil is just not the quickest medium. And I did a little more than just adding some final details in this case. I did take some time working with the colored pencils as well. Unfortunately, I haven't yet managed to film a complete uh, drawing with colored pencils. I mean, I've only done two complete drawings with colored pencils so far, but both of those turned out really nice, so I regret not filming those. Um, yeah, but you do some see some colored pencil work here towards the end. And it's just basically what I'm doing is slowly building up details, slowly layering on thin layers of paint onto the scales. Don't want to go too dark because of course it's um, a light colored snake. And for the um, colored, for the watercolor portion of this, I'm using my Schmincke watercolors. They were a Christmas present, I think, last year. And my colored pencils were a Christmas present uh, this year or this Christmas from my mother, from my parents, I should say. Adding some smaller scales around the head and I'm working on the eye a little bit. So we're not even halfway through the video and already I've started using the colored pencils. So they do make up a big portion of this drawing seemingly. And here I'm layering gray, yellow and brown to get the right shade for those scales. And I'm also using black for the darker areas. Colored pencil and watercolor are um, great mediums to use together because you can just do your base layers with watercolor and add the detail with the colored pencils which speeds up the process of using colored pencils a lot normally speaking and um, that was also the reason why I wanted some colored pencils to use with watercolor and to use with marker then of course I noticed I also enjoy using them on their own <laughs> adding loads of layers here and a lot of shading as well. Usually when you're using colored pencil it is nice to work on smaller areas at a, at a time because it's such a slow medium um, you otherwise tend to tire yourself out without having that feeling of success of having completed a nice portion of the painting, the drawing. So 
so I'm no colored pencil expert yet by any means, but I have noticed that you go through quite a lot with just a few drawings. I've done two full drawings and I've used it for some detailed work on maybe three pieces. And already I am seeing them wear down a lot because I keep sharpening them because I heard you're meant to always have a pointy pointy end to your pencils so you can get into all of the little nooks and crannies of that paper. I'm using watercolor for pa uh, paper for this obviously because I had a watercolor layer underneath and um, it's the Hannemühle Britannia watercolor paper if you're interested. I'm not sure if it's the best suited paper for this. Um, possibly it's too textured. I'm not sure, but it's worked out okay so far. <laughs> and uh, that white pencil is actually from another brand. Those are the uh, Faba Castel Pro uh, Polychromos pencils and um, that one I think is a Durant drawing pencil, the white one that's now lying at the right hand side. Um, watching some tutorials online I heard that that is meant to be good for white highlights. That was actually La Cree uh, Fine Art that recommended that one. Um, so I thought I would get it for white highlights and um, it's creamier than the other pencils. I think it's more there's more wax in it. And uh, the paintbrush you could just see me using, and there you see me using a larger one. I used mineral spirits for that. Just some kind of turpentine that I got in the art store a while ago to use with oils. And I did not enjoy using that at all. <laughs> <laughs> because the the fumes are just they're not good even with airing the place and um, I don't know you meant to, even if you use mineral spirits that are odorless they're still not meant to be very healthy so I don't like that part of the process so um, yeah on one of my recent drawings I actually tried out using a colorless blender um, a marker and that's worked out fairly well and otherwise you can always just kind of burnish the colors into each other so I think I should manage without having to use mineral spirits because the smell it's just it gives you a really bad headache and I don't have a large space to work in anyway so I think I'm going to be avoiding that in future I also got myself some uh, water mixable oils to avoid having to use the mineral spirits I mean not that I have to use oils I have acrylics I have watercolors I have way too many mediums that I want to work in at the moment. But the easiest are still watercolors. You just get out of your pans and some water and you're ready to go and the cleanup is non-existent. So there's that. I am basically using that light grey also to kind of burnish the colors a little bit into each other. Same with the white pencil and here I'm using some mineral spirit again. I guess the reason why I chose to use the colored pencils with this piece was um, because of all of this detail. Because with colored pencil I think you have a lot more control. When you're painting you, you know the color just kind of flows where it wants to or you just you just don't have that level of control even when you're working with a small brush it's different and I think at this point at least that portion of the snake that I've worked on most the scales are starting to look very realistic and I'm pleased with the outcome, which is always good. And I'm 
using a lot of black to define those scales and to darken off, uh, darken up the darker areas of those markings. And now I'm adding some shadow to the lighter scales on the face. Using some dark gray and blue. I don't have a very large set of colored pencils, but I seem to be able to do everything I want to with them so far. I mean, especially if you're using odorless mineral spirits or just mineral spirits in general to blend things out, then you basically you can mix them as you would paints, just you're mixing them on the paper, of course. The difference with the um, with the colorless blender, the alcohol marker that I was using on my recent painting, not in this one of course, but in a recent one I've, or one I'm working on currently, is that um, it kind of makes the colors look a little matte. So you mightn't want to use that on any of your final layers, depending on what look you're going for. Bye-bye.